Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football Keys to the Game for this Florida Gators program playing host to the Miami Hurricanes week one. Obviously a matchup that we'll continue to talk about as we lead up to this game and a matchup that we've been excited for really since early January. Now we just ran this same kind of episode through the lens of the Miami Hurricanes. Now we're running it through the lens of the Florida Gators, taking a look at a few matchups that I think Florida can exploit to have some success week one against this Miami Hurricanes program. Fired up to get into it before we do it, as always. Same rules apply. Let it fly in the comment section. I know there's going to be a lot of Florida fans listening to this. I know there's going to be a lot of Miami fans that are listening to this. The beauty of talking this kind of game, the rivalry, is hearing what you guys have to say in the comment section, whether you agree with me, whether you disagree with me. Let it fly in the comments section. That's the beauty of doing this. It's my favorite part about doing this. And of course, if you all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. And without further ado, let's get into this one. I want to start with, we kind of talked about this when we were talking about the lens of the Miami Hurricanes. This is, at least in my mind, by far the biggest key for this Florida Gators program. Make this Miami Hurricanes secondary tackle in space. And why I think this is so key is when you look at this Florida offense and when they had success in 2023, it was when they got their playmakers involved in space, right? A guy like Eugene Wilson having over 500 yards after the catch in that 2023 season, that is where Florida in their offensive talent, that's what they do best, right? Whether it's Eugene Wilson, whether it's Elijah Badger coming from Arizona state, those are two wide receivers that are exceptional with the football in their hands. And then you look at this Miami Hurricanes defense, the two things that I think are the biggest storylines is one, an elite pass rush, and number two, their young secondary. What's the best way to potentially neutralize this Miami Hurricanes elite pass rush? That's getting the ball out quick, right? Not giving Miami enough time to get home to the quarterback, right? We have big question marks about how this Florida Gators offensive line that struggled in pass protection last year is going to deal with this Florida Gators pass rush that I think is truly elite, right? They got guys on the edge. They got guys on the inside that can really get after the quarterback. And again, we have question marks about this Florida Gators offensive line and pass protection. The best way to neutralize that pass rush is just getting the football out quick. And when Florida was playing their best offense last year, that's exactly what they were doing. So if you can get the football out quick, I think number one, you're neutralizing the biggest strength of this Miami Hurricanes defense, and that is their pass rush. But I think more importantly, you're attacking probably the biggest question mark we have about the Miami Hurricanes, and that is a young secondary that's got a lot of new faces that haven't really shown, I shouldn't say shown, but don't have a ton of production at the Power 5 level yet. And so if you're Florida, that is probably the number one key to having success on the offensive side of the football, getting into our number two key, and that is winning the first quarter. I think this is big for a couple of different reasons. And I get that's kind of surface level commentary. You're the Florida Gators. You are playing in one of the most rowdy environments that we're going to see in all of college football in 2024. You don't want it. You want to make sure that you don't go down two scores early, right? Because you look at what Miami is going to try to do. They're going to try to run the football, get a lead in the first quarter and try to neutralize. And I guess take the life out of this Florida Gators crowd. That's going to be a massive storyline and why I think the crowd is so important in this game. As you look at Miami, it's no secret that I think this this roster, specifically on offense, is extremely talented. Right, Cam Ward, one of the better quarterbacks in the country. I think they have elite playmakers on the outside. That being said, with all this talent, it's a lot of new as well. Right, you have a new quarterback, you have a new center. If you can keep this Florida Gators crowd in this game and kind of break down some of that communication again, Cam Ward, new quarterback snapping the with the center, Zach Carpenter, that's a new center. Can you maybe get some pre-snap penalties, kind of get a little bit of dysfunction within this Miami Hurricanes offense? Because that's probably one of the things you can do best in terms of stopping this Hurricanes offense, where I think they're really talented, but it's really new. There might be some growing pains in terms of chemistry and communication. If you can get this crowd loud throughout four quarters, I think that can really impact how Miami operates on the offensive side of the football. Number three, red zone scoring. I think this is a matchup that, again, you go back to 2023, Florida struggled with a lot of things. Scoring in the red zone was not one of them. And you look at how you beat Miami at home here. You got to score touchdowns in the red zone. Miami was 100th in red zone scoring last year. Not very good on the defensive side of the football when it got into the red area. 
you look at Florida, they were top 20 in red zone scoring. This is one of those games that when that line is two and a half points, we expect this game to be a very tightly contested matchup. And touchdowns are going to win you football games, especially in this kind of matchup. Can Florida operate in the red zone? And I think they got some pieces to better help them operate in the red zone, right? You have a tight end in Arliss Boardingham who we think is really, really good. You have a guy in Tremere DK who I think can go up and make some of those contested catches. Can you use some of those guys, potentially even DJ Lagway as a true freshman in some, I wouldn't say wildcat packages, but maybe some creative red zone packages to steal touchdowns, right? When you get inside the 20, you do not want to be kicking field goals in this matchup. You want to be scoring touchdowns. Miami struggled on defense in the red zone last year. Can Florida attack that and score touchdowns in the red zone? Last one, and I think this is a really big storyline for Florida, not just week one, but really throughout the season. Can Austin Armstrong find a little bit more balance? You go back to last year, Florida gave up a lot of explosive plays, and Austin Armstrong at times just didn't really balance out how aggressive that defense should have been. Right At times they were a little too aggressive, got burned by explosive plays. You look at this Miami Hurricanes team, they have wide receivers that can win vertically, and manufacture explosive plays. That's one of the biggest differences between the Miami Hurricanes we saw in 2023 and the team we're going to see in 2024. Last year, Miami really struggled to attack the deeper third and hit those explosive plays in that passing attack. They're going to be able to hit those explosive plays. And I think one of the biggest storylines is can Austin Armstrong force this Miami Hurricanes team to methodically drive the football down the field? Now, that doesn't mean you're not aggressive as a defensive coordinator, but can you find a little bit more balance? We all know Austin Armstrong was a young defensive coordinator last year, but he was playing with a very young Florida Gators defense as well. And because of that, you kind of just saw them not really get into the rhythm in terms of how they wanted this defense to look. Can Florida be calculated with how aggressive they're being on the defensive side of the football That's a big storyline because, again, you do not want to give up explosive plays to this Miami Hurricanes program. With all the new faces that Miami has, Like, make them go execute 10, 12 plays in a drive. Make them methodically drive that football down the field. That's probably Florida's best chance at really neutralizing this Miami Hurricanes offense. Those are the five keys I have for the Gators, or four keys I have for the Gators. And, again, we're going to take a look at this matchup from a lot of different ways. But at the end of the day, one of the things that I think really Florida needs to lean into is this is a Miami Hurricanes team that under Mario Cristobal has been really, really bad on the road. They got a lot of new faces on the offensive side of the football, really good players. I've been very vocal that I think this Miami Hurricanes offense is very talented. They've struggled on the road. They got a lot of new faces. Can Florida kind of capitalize on that week one in this matchup? Massive storyline to this game. We'll cut it there again. Appreciate you guys rocking with the fellas. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Would love to hear from you guys in the comments section, and we'll talk to y'all later. Peace.